Pau, Madaki api, Chan wash dea, Napi, choose a pillow. Tachanku cheska, macha pillow. Malakota. My relatives, I greet you with a warm handshake. My name is Holy Road. I am Lakota. My non Indian name is Kevin Abresk, and I'm the managing editor for Indians.com, a Native American news website owned and operated by Ho Chunk Incorporated, the Economic Development Corporation for the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska. Thank you for joining me today for this live interview with Brian Brewer, a Lakota veteran and former president of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, and Michael Patrick O'Connor, a Dakota activist based in Sioux City, Iowa. Thank you both for joining me, Michael and Brian. How are you doing today? Oh, how was it? Kevin. Um, and just so everybody knows, uh, Brian's having a little trouble with his uh, cell signal, but he should be live with us here in a minute. Um, but for now, uh, I think we'll just uh, start off this way. Um, Michael, if you wouldn't mind just kind of telling people where you're at and kind of what you're up to today. Sure, sure. How Matakiapi, Michazeki, Michael. Um, from the Ihankuan people, I'm from the Yankton Sioux people. Um, my name is Michael O'Connor, Michael Spotted Eagle, Wamadi Gadesco O'Connor. I'm in uh, Keystone, South Dakota, right along the uh, main street area here, right in front of a Trump, um, um, a place that is devoted entirely to selling Trump gear. So I'm um, waiting on the rally that's supposed to happen, the anti-Trump rally, the native-led anti-Trump rally here in Keystone that's supposed to start at 3 and go to 7 p.m. Great, great. Um, so yeah, as many of you probably know by now, uh, President Trump is planning to visit the Black Hills, uh, Mount Rushmore specifically, at about 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time today. Um, he's going to be a uh, giving a speech and viewing some fireworks later on. Um, he's foregoing all social distancing measures, public health measures in order to have this event. Um, it's a point of contention for a lot of people in South Dakota and around the country, quite honestly, kind of the same way that his rally in, in Tulsa was. Um, there was a, a rally last night, actually, an anti-Trump rally last night in uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. That was pretty cool. Um, they had a uh, light that sort of shone on this uh, on this uh, Pennington County courthouse uh, there in Rapid City, South Dakota. It said, you are on stolen land. And as you can see in the photo there, a lot of people are standing in front of it holding up their fists. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, obviously, Trump's visit to Mount Rushmore brings up a lot of uh, very frustrating uh, things for Native people, especially Lakota people. Um, you know, the federal government has long asserted that the Black Hills were, were sold to the Lakota people, even though the Lakota people have never accepted that payment. And, uh, you know, I mean, it just it's just uh, kind of obvious to a lot of people that you can't buy something that isn't for sale. And uh, but still, they believe that this uh, these Black Hills and Mount Rushmore um, were taken fairly and justly. Um, and obviously the people, the men on uh, Mount Rushmore have been a point of contention for many years as well. Um, Michael, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of talk about what, what made you decide to go up to uh, Keystone today and take part in this event. Um, you know, as I go by, there's a van that says MAGA country, Trump 2020, no more bullshit. That's what it says on there. And I'm telling, uh, well... To get back to what you said, Kevin, there's just a lot of things going on, and I just couldn't, you know, I'm a, I couldn't find any reason not to be up here because I heard that the relatives, the Lakotas, the the, the other tribes, tribal nations, and then the non-native allies were planning a uh, anti-Trump protest here, and I know that there's a lot of people that would love to be here, so I also want to pay my respects to the elders and those out there. Those relatives that cannot be here, but uh, but I but I'm but you're here in spirit with me, and so there wasn't no reason that I could find that I couldn't be here. I felt like I owed it to the grandmas and grandpas, owed it to the people who suffered uh, before us to do something and to come here because our people were gathering. And what is it about uh, this visit to Mount Rushmore specifically that that uh, bothers you? I guess. Oh, gosh, are you kidding me? Um, that's a real uh, simple question, but it, it, it requires a complex answer. Well, for one, you know, Trump being here and what he stands for, um, to me, 
is something that is un-American. It is uh, our people welcomed um, European people onto these lands years ago, helped them stay alive. And, um, and of course, you know, obviously we know what that led to. And so, I mean, you know, I, I don't, a lot of things in these times are happening. And, um, um, you know, the history of those faces. I mean, I could talk about the history of those faces in the uh, lawlessness, uh, uh, kill the Indian, save the man policies that were, the, that this, uh, um, excuse me, I'm just kind of at a loss of words, but but that this administration, I think, has, has sort of uh, piggybacked off of. And so to me, it's like an enemy has entered the land of, the, of our holy lands, an enemy, and even an any enemy I, idealism and is very un-American. As you go up and down these stores right now, you see icy very things that represent hate, that represent everything that our grandmas and grandpas were against. Everything, If I mean, if they would have, if we would have known um, what kind of people these type of, movements we're going to develop into i think for sure that we wouldn't we would we would have reacted differently um but obviously we were a friendly people and they were suffering and so we we welcomed them onto the shores um and you know each each face each each president on that on that um mountain that uh that uh that relative that sits up there like that, they, they have defaced it already years ago. And every single president up there stands for something that is very anti-Native American, anti-Indian. A lot of people, you know, don't, they, they don't quite know that. A lot of non-Native people don't know that. And so that's why I speak strongly and I stand strongly for my relatives because of that, because of that previous history. And I don't know if we have time to go through Go through that or not, or not, Kevin. Um, but right now, there's a lot of, to me, uh, uh, hate, hateful sentiment right here. And as as a Trump car went by earlier, everybody was cheering. I was the only one that I, I yelled boo and did a thumbs down. And somebody was, and they didn't accept that very well. You could feel the tension in the air. So it's going to be very interesting when our relatives from uh, all the directions uh, meet up. And, uh, you know, it's a good time to uh, lift our voices up. And it's a good time to uh, stay strong. It's a good time to uh, stand brave. Great. I sure appreciate that, Michael. Yeah, obviously, um, the the four faces that are on Mount Rushmore represent men who um, – are kind of despised by a lot of native people. They're talking about Washington and Jefferson, who were both slave slave owners. Uh, President Lincoln, uh, even though he uh, led the abolition of slavery, he also approved the hanging of 38 Dakota men in Minnesota after the Sioux uprising. And uh, President uh, Theodore Roosevelt, I'm sorry, President Roosevelt is reported to have said, uh, quote, I don't go so far as to think that the only good Indians are dead Indians, but I believe nine out of every 10 are. Yep. And uh, so, you know, I mean, with those kinds of sent sentiments, that kind of history behind them, you're talking about uh, these this massive statue carved into the sacred Paha Sapa, Black Hills. Um, it's just there's a lot of elements to what's going on there that, that are really frustrating to a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Obviously, you know, this also involves a governor of South Dakota, Christy Noem, who's really shown herself to be an enemy of the Lakota after trying to force the Lakota people to shut down their checkpoints, uh, these checkpoints that were really serving um, as a barrier uh, for the Lakota people of the Cheyenne River and Ovala Sioux uh, tribes from COVID-19. You know, they had set up these checkpoints to protect themselves from COVID-19. Um, Brian, if you're ready, it uh, looks like you're, you're, you may be ready to speak now. Um, I'm going to ask you to mute here, and uh, if you would share some thoughts. I know a bit ago you were at, uh, or you were near a checkpoint uh, at Red Shirt, uh, kind of in the, in the uh, badlands of South Dakota. Uh, where are you now? What's going on? I, uh, 
Uh, well, I just left the checkpoint and I drove up on top, of, uh, right on top of Red Shirt Table right now. We have better reception up here. But uh, where we're set up, we're probably about 300 yards right below us here, right, uh, right, right at the village. Uh, and that's about uh, 200 yards from uh, the, the road. Hey, uh, Michael, real quick. There. I'm sorry, Michael, not Michael. Uh, Brian, real quick there. Um, I think your hand might be covering the mic or something. I don't know. Uh, there is a lot oh, of background really? yeah, noise I, there. Kevin, I had some. Kevin, I seen, let me go back and get in and, get in and tune in. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Brian, there. Hello? Yep. Go ahead. Any better, Kevin? Yeah, I think so. Want to talk? Yep. Okay, all right. Yep. Uh, a couple of hundred yards from where we are set up, uh, going toward the uh, uh, recreation border. And uh, to my right is uh, the tribal uh, point where the tourists and stuff will stop and they check the mud and go through. So, and we are set up around the border. About 200 yards up the border itself. So, but we, have, Kevin, we have uh, four roadblocks. Uh, we are, we're at uh, Sino on Highway 18. We are here at Red Church. Uh, we are at Hill, uh, which goes through Scenic. We have a group there, and then we have a group at Wombly. So, these are the four border points that we are uh, where we're at today. Great. Um, yeah, Brian, sorry. I'm still having a hard time hearing you there. Um, really? I, I, I kind of made out most of what you said, I think. But I, I wondered if you could um, just kind of describe why this decision was made to to set up these uh, checkpoints, these roadblocks, or whatever you want to call them, I guess. Well, there's a, a lot of rumors out that, um, you know, Christy Elm has been uh, trying to close up our checkpoints here on the Ogallala Reservation and the Cheyenne River Reservation. Uh, she wants uh, the reservation open so everyone can go through. And uh, both um, reservations are about people. Uh, and uh, that's where we've been going. And, uh, hey, sorry, Brian. I, I think we're losing you there. But there's been a lot of. Um, having a hard time hearing you there. I don't know what to do. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what to do here. Um, yeah, sorry. About if I that. step out of my car, it's windy. If I step out of the car, it's windy here. Sure, and, sure. Uh, yeah, but but uh, should I continue? Or? Um, yeah, why don't you go ahead and try again there, and we'll we'll see. Okay. Let's, the governor of South Dakota has uh, threatened the tribes, the Ogallalas and the Cheyenne River for us setting up our checkpoints, not allowing people to come onto our reservation unless they have an essential business. Uh, she's made threats with us, legal threats, uh, other threats, National Guard, things like that. Uh, now there's a lot of rumors that uh, there's different uh, white supremacist groups that may come onto the reservation and close up the, close up the checkpoints for her. So there's just a lot of rumors. So the grassroots people, the veterans, the Tokalas, we are we are manning four different border sites right now. Um, we are here in case something like that should happen. Uh, we had a a few a couple of caravans that went to uh, Mount Rushmore this morning with a lot of the younger people, and people have been traveling through here all morning, uh, going up to uh, Mount Rushmore to protest. Uh, uh, a number of us veterans, we decided that we would stay and we would uh, stay. So that's kind of where we're at right now, Kevin. Great, great. Have you um, seen anybody kind of pass through these checkpoints yet today who caused you guys any concern? Or, Well, not really. Uh, we're getting so much traffic here. They closed up Highway 79 because of Trump. They're closing all the highways. And what they're doing, they're telling all those people on Highway 79 to come through the Pine Ridge Reservation. Coming through, but they are they're being turned around, and they're the ones that the tourists and stuff. They said, "Well, they're telling us to come this way to go through the reservation." So, trying to figure out how we can get this communicated, we're hoping the sheriff would come through. That. They can tell all the tourists and everything to come through this. So, 
Uh, sorry, Brian, I'm, I'm losing you again there. Um, I did make out, I think you said that um, the tourists that are trying to pass through the reservation uh, were told to go through the reservation, which is very troubling to hear. Um, is that is that accurate, what you said? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that, okay. that is accurate. Yep. Yeah, they closed up the highways and they're telling them to come through the reservation to get through. So, you know, we're trying to get hold of the sheriff to see if they could tell them to stop stop them because it's it's a big inconvenience for those people that are trying to travel i mean they're driving you know 30 miles to get here then they have to turn around and go back you know um but that's uh but everything is pretty quiet uh everybody's up in the mount rushmore uh the president trip will leave tonight and uh we're, we're concerned about tomorrow is that uh all those uh, people will have a lot of free time or our time to do what they want so we will be manning the the road the uh our borders tomorrow also sure sure well it's very troubling to hear that people might have been told to travel through the reservation in order to get to the black know, hills uh, it's uh, they know what they're doing uh, they know what they're doing they know the reservation is closed and them through yeah scary it's uh but sounds like, sounds that, like the smallpox yeah, blankets it, all over it, again it is. It is. It really is. You know. The, you know why? And we, you know, we try to explain to them that we're here to. Uh, we don't want. To, you know, we have COVID here. We don't want to jeopardize your health, and we don't want you to jeopardize our health either. You know, and that's all we're trying to just protect our our lands. Hopefully, they understand that. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, thank you, Brian. Um, I'm going to get back to uh, Michael there, if you would mind, um, if you would mind just kind of panning around where you're at. I'd love to see more kind of what things look like um, there in Keystone right now. I think you had mentioned that um, there aren't too many uh, other, uh, I guess, native protesters there yet. But um, um, if you would mind just kind of panning around and, and showing us what you can see. Well, I'm sorry, Kevin, with this Zoom thing. I'm not sure if I could do so easily like with the Facebook app. I'm just not that familiar with Zoom, so I have to, have to apologize to everybody. Um, uh, but I can describe to you exactly what I'm seeing right now. You're just seeing Trump supporters all the way up and down both sides throughout. You're, gonna, you're seeing Trump supporters driving by, people cheering. Um, you're seeing just shop after shop after shop with Trump supporting um, apparel, caps, um, things like that. And so now I'm starting now just just now I'm starting to see a little bit more flavor coming in, a little bit of our native people coming in, making their presence coming, I think probably for the protest for the rally. Um, and I did see a Oglala Lakota uh, flag come through and that that was very comforting for me um because like i said when somebody drove by everybody was cheering and i was giving the thumbs down thumbs down there was a lot of tension in the air so um i even saw law enforcement um heavy law enforcement um good good but law enforcement was stationed they had stationed themselves right here at the end probably all blocked down it's a very small town they had stationed themselves right above two Trump 2020 um, flags. And I don't know if they did that on purpose or they're just strategically placing themselves at one side of the community. But I did kind of wonder if they were aware of that as well and what kind of message that does send. But right now, uh, Keystone, South Dakota is very pro-Trump at this time. And really, that pretty much captures it. <laughs> Um, are you nervous at all for your own safety? Because I'm nervous for your safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely I am. But it's the grandmas and the grandpas who, who were at Wounded Knee, who were at Standing Rock, and who suffered and who died to preserve our language, our way of life. That courage is out here. This is just a small little area that is being poisoned by this hate. But all these mountains still, still exuberate still radiate that 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 strong native presence those trees up there our relatives they know that they, they know that i'm down here and so yeah that is there no doubt about that 
but still the relatives are, are on my side. Great. Well, I sure appreciate you uh, sharing what you see there. Um, if it's okay, Michael, I would like to check back with you maybe in a couple hours or so once um, the uh, anti-Trump protest kind of uh, gears up a little more. Um, I think that protest was set to start officially around 3 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, about an hour and 15 minutes from now. So maybe we can check back in about an hour and a half? Yeah. yeah Great. Certainly. Great. All right. Well, take okay. care of yourself out there. Oh, I just wanted to say, Kevin, it's it's an honor to be on the same live feed as uh, as as uh, Mr. Brian Brewer. I'm, you probably can't hear me now, but I just wanted to say, you know, send that love out to my elders and those people that taught us upcoming generations, so we can teach the next generation how to have respect, which I think is very lacking here right now. You see, you see. Uh, t-shirts on them and with vulgarities on them, almost like they take pride in the fact of, of disrespecting such a sacred place, like they're just completely unaware and their agenda is just so important that they would absolutely disrespect a, a sacred place like that. And I think those that the message uh, can be portrayed without all of that. So it's, it's a shame right now. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk again here in a bit, uh, Michael. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Talk soon. Gotcha.